In this recording, the audience that I will be using is a first grade class in Berlin, Connecticut, which is a suburban town. They are learning about different math strategies. So I put together a chart, an anchor chart, that the students can refer back to called Math Strategies Anchor Chart. There are different things in this anchor chart that you can use. They go in order with levels. So you have your first level, that's the beginning letter level for first grade, which is using your fingers to help you count to answer an addition problem. These are all strategies to help with counting on and using different strategies to really understand math concepts instead of just memorizing math facts and not knowing why or using manipulatives to see how things get put together. So this first one it says use your fingers. The second one is make tallies or pictures to make a math sentence right here like the example shows. Count objects, so you count, these are called unifix cubes which we use in first grade a lot. Um, and unifix cubes come in different colors and you can put the cubes actually together with your hands and those are a type of manipulative that the first graders can use. And then number four is use the number grid. A number grid is like a 100s chart. So they can use the 100s chart or you might have a number grid that only goes to 50 for students who are overwhelmed by the 100s chart. Um, use a number line is number five and this shows our frog jumping so you start at one and it looks like they counted on so one two three four five so one plus four equals five and they use the frog jumpers which we have this exact model in the classroom for their use and number six is use ten frames so this is what a tens frame is. It has five boxes on top and five on the bottom. So there's a total of ten boxes in the tens frame. And you use these little dots to show place, place setters for um, the tens frame. So you're going to use, this would say five plus three equals eight, or you could do eight plus two equals ten, and you get your total. Number seven is put big number in head and add on. So the bigger number out of six plus three is six. So you put it right in your head, you add on three. The reason why I have so many visuals on this first page is because first graders cannot always read all these numbers. So if you show them a visual, like the hands, they're gonna know to use their different fingers the tallies, they, re they know that, that those are tallies. They can recognize the unifix cubes. They know the 100s chart. They might not be able to read all these different things, but they're going to be able to understand what it's talking about and the different strategy to use based on the pictures. I can also use these numbers over here. They all go to a, to a page that further explains or gives an activity. And right here in my pull tab, it has what you should do. It says, click on a number to go to that lesson. Click on the home button to get back to this page. So in the right hand corner, there'll be a little home button. And that will bring you back to this page. So let's try the first one. It says, use your fingers. So you click on number one and it brings you right to that page. Then the students can see, okay, if I look at my hands like this, the thumb will be one, then the first finger two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what I would do on this page is I would have a partner tell their partner what to do, what the number sentence should be. So using the interactive smart board, they would go ahead and write in a number maybe three plus two equals and they would have to use their fingers in order to figure it out so they would have hold up three fingers and then two more and that equals five and then they would get to write it in then the other partner would switch and you would take turns giving different 
math problems to their partner. Then here's the home button right here, which is highlighted in purple. It's the same on every page, so you don't get confused. And you click there, and it brings you back home. Next one is make tallies or pictures. And this, I gave the students an independent um, work problem that they could do by themselves, or they could do it with a partner. So if a student gets finished early, then they can go back and they can do this by themselves using the smart board, or they could do it with a partner. So this, they get to use the spinner, and that creates their number. So you get number one. So they can write in the number one. Then you get to click this number. Oh, they gave you a random number and it's zero. So you can take, they would take the pen and they could write zero. Then at the end, one plus zero equals one. And they would be able to figure it out using some tallies. So the one tally would be just one tally. The plus zero would be zero tallies. So one tally plus zero tallies equals one tally, which equals one. They could also use, let's erase this, and they could use the pictures down below, which you see it says pictures, and they could choose whatever picture they want so it's engaging and fun for them. And they might use, so let's click on the spinner and see what this says. It says three. So maybe they want to use three dogs. So one, two, three. Then plus nine. And then they would add nine more dogs up here. And then finally, they would get to count and touch the board and use all the different dogs and figure out what their answer would be. Let's go home and go to the next one. Next one is count objects. So this they get to use Unifix cubes and they get to use this dice. Die is a another method that students can use to recognize numbers quickly. So that's why I have used it here and the spinner is another tool that they use um, to recognize numbers quickly. So here's my first one. And notice four. that it has the number and it says the sound. It said four. So they could take whatever cubes they wanted. Maybe they want four blue. And this is again is engaging and fun for them to use the colors that they want. Then they would add one. One. So maybe they want to use the green. And then all together they would make the five. So they would be able to count the objects. The reason I have the two different types of die is because it's important for students to learn the dot value. Five. They need to know automatically that that means five. And the four, they need to recognize their numbers. Let's go home. Next is use the number grid. Here I have a number grid. These are both songs that you can go to. Um, they're by Harry Kindergarten, and this is Skip Counting, and this is In the Teens, and they're hyperlinked to go to that. And it says, which one? Here's one of them. Hey now, kids, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Gonna count by twos. Hey now, kids, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Gonna count by twos. So you can see you get the point there, and there's another movie, uh, another video on this one. But the number grid itself, they can they can use the number grid to count. So you could, if you click on it, you can start maybe at two, and then they want to count three more. So one, two, three, and they would get five. Or maybe they're trying to count by twos, in which you could just type in the number, and it'll show you all the multiples of twos. Maybe they want to see by fives. Oh, you have to reset first. Maybe they want to see by fives, and it shows the two rows that make fives. So that's another tool that they can use. Next is the number line. And with this number line, I created a slide for them to put the blue marker on where they start. So maybe they start at one. And then they want to frog jump three more. So these little jumps actually do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three. And they end on four. So then you can take the red X and you can put it on four. Again, they can use partners for this and they can create their own number problems and um, for their partner. And then we can mark that right here. And let's go home again and use the 10 frames. So in the 10 frames, you get to use these dots and you get to make different number sentences for your partner. Maybe your problem is three plus what equals 10. So now they have to figure out how many spaces there are left. So they have the three dots plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they can fill in their answer seven. So they're using the skill of a missing add end. Finally, we get to use put the bigger number in your head. And this one is a worksheet that they could do by themselves, but it's also a colorful visual. So they, the students could take turns using this, using these worksheets. And this has 3 plus 15. So they can check themselves and they see that the little boy has 15 in his head, which is the bigger number. So 15. And then they add on three fingers at the end. So 15, 16, 17, 18. And they can put their number in here. And this is actually a great one too because you can save their work. And then later on the teacher can go back and check to see if they were on task and if they got the correct answer. Finally, we have, those are all the strategies. So we have all the different strategies and the ways to get to the strategies. But at the end of the game, at the end of the lesson, there's a game. And in this game, they start here, and they go all the way around, and they finish at the end. The directions say, roll the dice and answer the math wrong using each strategy at least once. If you answer the question wrong, you lose your turn. Whoever makes it to the finish line first wins. So these are your little place markers. And you can roll a die, which they would have in their hands, for um, a manipulative that they can touch and feel and see. And they would move the little frog, whoever. Say he rolled a 2. So they would go to 2, and they would have to answer 1 plus 1. But all the materials would be provided with their hands that we've learned in the first, in the anchor chart. So they could use their fingers, they could write tallies on the board, they could use the uh, manipulatives, they could use the hundreds chart, they could use a number line or a tens frame or put the bigger number in their head to solve the problem. And they have to, each problem they get, they have to use a different way to solve that problem and their partner will make sure that they're using the different way to solve that problem. So this is an all-inclusive game that helps them really understand what the strategies they have are and how to use them. And a teacher can monitor this or another adult can monitor this and make sure that they really get the concept of using these different strategies which we learned in the anchor chart above here. And then at the end Whoever gets to the finish line first is the winner. And the game would keep going until they got there. Then, if they got so good with that game, there was another game that they can use that goes higher with the higher numbers. But right now in first grade, they just have to know up to five. So they have to know all addition problems up to five. So you can see that there's some other ones that do are a little trickier for them, but they are ready for that challenge right now. They just have to have mastered the five, up to five facts. So again, this will bring you back home once they, once they are at the game. They can go back home, they can check to see if they want to use anything else here, and they can actually use the smart board and check, use the pens and maybe check off one that they use, maybe they use this one, maybe they use number four, so they can check it off, maybe they use number five. They could even use different colors to check off their answers. And at the end, I would grade the students by showing me the different mathematical concepts 